Hello and welcome to my last lecture in equilibrium chemistry. Today we're going to look at the concept of pH curves and buffering systems. Of course, these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Hopefully you've been referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how well you're mastering the material. A pH curve is a graph of pH against the addition of a titrant for an acid-base titration. The curve will have characteristic sharp changes in pH that correspond to the system's equivalence point or points. And we'll see that some acid-base systems can have more than one equivalence point. It'll also have characteristic flat spots that correspond to regions where the system is resisting changes to its pH, known as buffering regions. By way of reminder, we should recall that an equivalence point is the point where the concentration of the acid is equivalent to the concentration of the base in the system. An equivalence point, though, is not empirically observable, so we use a chemical species known as an indicator to determine the equivalence point. An indicator typically goes through a dramatic color change as it passes through a certain pH range. And a list of these indicators is found in your data booklet. If you look at it closely, it demonstrates that an indicator is itself a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base system, where the conjugate acid is one color and the conjugate base is another. Um, and, as, and as we've said, an acid-base system can have more than one, can have one or more equivalence points that correspond to sequential deprotonations of the acid. We define monoprotic acids, therefore, to be species capable of losing a single proton, while polyprotic acids are capable of losing two or sometimes three protons sequentially. The sequential loss of these protons can be seen as sequential equivalence points in a typical pH curve, and we'll examine one. Um, therefore, pH curves can be categorized into various types. These include a strong acid titrated with a strong base, a strong acid titrated with a weak base, a weak acid titrated with a strong base, as well as a polyprotic acid titrated with a strong base. You notice what's missing is a weak acid titrated with a weak base. Um, this type of titration doesn't proceed typically because you get a very sort of loose and sloppy uh, pH curve. You don't get much information from it. A buffering system is a system that includes a weak acid and its conjugate base, both in solution. Formerly, we thought that strong acid-based systems were also buffering systems. In fact, your te textbook might continue to state it so. We now know that they're not. We now know, after we look at the data, that what appears to be a buffering effect in a strong acid-base system is simply a dilution effect. Uh, uh, by definition, a buffer system acts to resist dramatic changes in pH, but uh, caused by the introduction of a small amount of an acid or a base. And it does so by replacing that strong acid or base with a weaker one. And you'll see what I mean when we look at buffers. An example of a strong acid, strong base titration is the aqueous hydrogen chloride sodium hydroxide system. The Bronsted-Lowry equation for the reaction looks like this. If we start a titration with the acid in the reaction vessel and the base in the burette dripping down out of the burette, the pH curve for the reaction would look like this. And you notice it starts very, very low at one or lower because you're dealing with a very strong acid in the reaction vessel. And at the end of the day, it goes very, very high. It approaches 13 or 14 because you're adding a very strong base to the reaction vessel. At the equivalence point, the amount of acid is chemically equivalent to the amount of base. And we see that here at pH 7. And that makes sense because all the acid has been neutralized by all of the base. And what we're left with is the product, which is water, as we see in the reaction here. Um, we cannot, of course, observe the equivalence point, but we use an indicator that goes through a color change at an endpoint that's close to equivalence. And a common indicator is phenolphthalein, popular because it goes through a dramatic color change. Um, if you look at phenolphthalein in your data booklet, you'll see that its endpoint is somewhat higher than pH 7. Sorry, I lost my mouse. There it is. Um, that's fine. Um, you, you see that the pH range here through equivalence is very high. You swing from sort of pH 3 to pH 12. Well, the difference between those two ends of the equivalence point 
might be just a drop or two of additional base. So we'll swing both through equivalence point of the chemical system and the end point of an indicator within a drop or two of added base. So phenolphthalein, even though its end point is a little higher than the equivalence point of this system, it's still a more than satisfactory indicator. If we titrate a weak acid with a strong base, our pH curve changes. Uh, for example, the titration of ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, with sodium hydroxide, a strong base, will illustrate the point. And here's the bronsted lowry reaction. Since we start with a weak acid, the initial pH of the system is higher than it was for the stronger acid. Uh, you'll notice also, though, perhaps surprisingly, that the pH of the equivalence point increases. It's no longer 7. It's elevated because there's a second base introduced into the system. So here's the curve, and let me make these two comments. First of all, the initial pH of the system is no longer down around 1 or 0. It's up around 3, 4, 5. And that's because ethanoic acid is a much weaker acid than aqueous hydrogen chloride. But you'll also notice that the equivalence point is has elevated up above 7, which seems odd. You'd think equivalence means uh, neutral pH, but it doesn't. In point of fact, the bronsted lowry acid and the bronsted lowry base are equivalent. However, there's a second base present that elevates the pH of the equivalent, at equivalence, and that's the ethanoate ion. <clears throat> its presence elevates equivalence above pH 7. Of course, we need an indicator that changes color near the equivalence point. And if you look at your data booklet, phenyl red and thymol lost my mouse again, thymol thaline, both go through a color change. There it is. Both go through a color change in or around the, the equivalence point here. So those would both be acceptable indicators. And again, just to restate the point, it's the buildup of the ethanoate ion, which is itself a bronsted Lowry base, that elevates the equivalence point above pH 7. Um, for the first time, we see a buffering system indicated by this horizontal portion of the pH curve. In this uh, range, the system is resisting the addition of the strong base. It's resisting a pH change uh, in response to the addition of a strong base over this region. And in fact, what it's doing, it's converting the hydroxide that's being added to the system to a much weaker base, which is the ethanoate ion. If we titrate a strong acid with a weak base, again, we see our pH curve change in a characteristic way. And the titration of aqueous hydrogen chloride with ammonia is a good example. Here's the bronsted lowry reaction. And we'll start with the weak base in the reaction vessel on this occasion. So the initial pH of the system is going to be lower than that for a stronger base. Uh, you'll also notice that the pH of equivalence decreases. It's depressed because of the presence of a second acid, and I'll talk about that as well. So here's our curve, and let me restate those comments. You notice the initial pH is lower than what it is for a stronger base because we're dealing with a weak base. We're dealing with ammonia. And secondly, you'll notice that as we go through the equivalence point, the equivalence point is lower than pH 7. Well, we know at the equivalence point that the amount of the bronsted lowry acid and the bronsted lowry base are equivalent, but there's a second acid present. It's the ammonium ion we see right here. And that uh, material is what's depressing the pH of equivalence below 7. Of course, we'll need an indicator with an endpoint that closely approximates this equivalence point. And if you inspect your data booklet, you'll see that methyl orange and brome cresyl green are both suitable indicators. And the system is buffering over this range of the pH curve. It's buffering the addition of additional strong acid by converting that strong acid, the hydronium ion, into a weaker acid, the ammonium ion. And just to restate it then, it's the buildup of the ammonium ion that depresses the pH to the equivalence point below 7 that you see right here. Polyportic acids can lose more than one proton. Examples include aqueous hydrogen sulfate and aqueous hydrogen phosphate.
With the exception of the loss of the first proton on um, the aqueous hydrogen sulfate, they are all weak acids. They can be titrated with strong bases, and the resulting pH curve will demonstrate more than one equivalence point. And these equivalence points will each correspond to the sequential loss of a proton. The carbonic acid sodium, hydrox sodium hydroxide system is one such system. So the first deprotonation looks like this. So the carbonic acid reacts with the hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide, produce the hydrogen carbonate ion and water. That reaction will proceed to completion before the second deprotonation commences. So the, the carbonic acid will disappear completely before this next reaction take place, takes place. So after the H2CO3 disappears, the hydrogen carbonate ion will then start reacting with the excess hydroxide to form the carbonate ion and water. Um, there are many extremely important biological and industrial buffer systems, as we'll see. And these include several uh, that protect dramatic swings in the pH of your blood. So, uh, and in point of fact, this, this hydrogen carbonate ion is one such blood buffer. Let's take a look at a pH curve for a polyprotic acid. And here's the first equivalence point. So this equivalence point corresponds to the uh, carbonic acid reacting with the uh, introduction of the strong base to produce the hydrogen carbonate ion in water. And you'll notice that the pH is depressed below 7 because of the addition of a, a weak acid, the hydrogen carbonate ion, to the system. The second equivalence, after all of the carbonic acid has disappeared, the hydrogen carbonate ion starts to react with excess hydroxide to form the carbonate ion and water. And you'll notice that the pH here is elevated above pH 7 because of the presence of a weak bronsted lowry base, the carbonate ion, which does not participate in the bronsted lowry reaction. So at this point in time, the hydrogen carbonate ion is equivalent to the hydroxide ion. And the system uh, is buffering the addition of the strong base over two separate regions of the curve. The first we see here, and the second we see here. So these are both true buffering regions in the system. This initial sort of uptick in the pH is also chemically important. Keep in mind our definition of a buffering system. A buffering system is a weak acid together with its conjugate base in solution. Well, in this particular chemistry, we started with just carbonic acid. So until we have a little bit of its conjugate base, the hydrogen carbonate ion, it's not truly a buffering system. So this initial uptick in pH corresponds to conversion of some of the carbonic acid into the hydrogen carbonate ion. And then once we have both species present, our buffering system has been established. And that's the comment I'm making here. So that's the end of my lecture on pH curves and buffers. Hopefully you found that some value. Um, your teacher will undoubtedly refer you to uh, some homework in this area. Do the homework to gain a, a good sense of, um, of how to complete these questions. That completes my lectures in equilibrium chemistry. I'll see you next time when we take a look at some example diploma questions in this area. And I hope you found this lecture of some value. Thank you.